congratulations on the movie. Thanks. Let's start with that. Um, did you know when you got involved how bonkers and awesome and crazy this thing was going to be? I mean, I didn't know the extent of it, but I've known Mad Max since I've known about Mad Max since I was like, you know, six years old. So I knew that I was going to be getting in my, in, into some sort of like mischief. But I didn't. I didn't know. I you know. I didn't know the extent of it. We actually signed on. I, I signed on to do it um, without even reading the script. So. Uh, what was the when you think back on the making of the film? Was there like a day or two that you'll always like you always think back to? Like it's one of those days or a few days that you're like, I can't believe we're going to survive this, or I can't believe we're doing this, or. Uh, not really. I I mean, in six months, like to put it down to one day that you remember is like. A bit hard. There are moments, like, you know. I have I have memories of moments, but I wouldn't say there was one specific day. There was so much going on in six months. A lot can happen. You know. A hundred percent. Was there a day though, like pranks or you know what I mean? Like I'm always curious about memorable moments from filming when people remember back. I mean, maybe uh, there there was a day where in, you know in the film I get yanked out of um, the sunroof of of the car just by the arm and the bicep of a seven foot giant uh, Rictus Erectus um, and I just had to he kept having to pull me out so many times and he got angry and my shoulder was hurting and I was the, the, the metal was scraping my stomach and I think he pulled me out of that car 20 times so I've always rem I'll always remember that day that, that qualifies in what I'm talking about yeah um, in the last little bit since you shot uh, Mad Max, you've done two other movies, and you're working on one, I guess, right now. Mm. I've done three, actually. My bad. My count is, is off. What uh, did you always know you wanted to go to this? You know, to be an actor, and or do you know what I mean? No, I no. It's it's a, it's it's interesting that one. You know, I got I got booked on Mad Max um, through my modeling agency, and I'd never considered acting it was something. I don't. I'd never even considered it really. Um, and as soon as I got booked for it and I landed on set, I was like, this is, this is like where I was meant to be my whole life, you know, sort of thing. I really had a moment of um, an epic shift in my entire life, really. It, it, it changed everything for me. And, and it's funny that I never thought about it because now when I think about um, who I was as a child and the things that I was interested in at school and da-da-da, it seems like I was leading towards that my whole life without actually realizing it. Well, the thing is, in, in my opinion, and obviously I've done a lot of modeling work, um, mm. clearly, uh, it does seem like there's an element of acting when yeah. it comes to modeling. There can be, if you cho if you choose to be like that, you know, it's sort of like, um, I had to act as though I enjoyed it. <laughs> that, that definitely qualifies. <laughs> Which I started to fail in um, quite badly and got a pretty bad reputation for myself for being a little nasty, but... <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It, there's there's something about the relationship with a camera that I think, you know, obviously modeling and, and acting has that in common. But apart from that, they're very different worlds. Um, the less you say, the better a model you are, generally. Whereas with acting, it's it's all about how much you have to say, and, and you know. What have you learned in the last few years since Mad Max and these recent projects that maybe you wish you could tell yourself back on day one of Mad Max? You know, like acting advice yeah. or. You know, or maybe you got some good advice on a set, and you, it's stuck with you. Um, I don't know. I, it's it's a funny one. I don't I don't know if there's anything in in uh, specifically that I would. I'm still learning so much. That's the thing. Every time I do a film, I'm I still learn so much. But really, so far, what's got me by is my instinct, my instincts. You know, my raw instincts with each character, and that's kind of what I was doing with Mad Max, and that's what I've continued to do thus far. I mean. I'm sure there's going to get to a point where I should be getting some sort of professional training and stuff. Um, maybe I should have done it all along, but um, I don't know. I guess I guess maybe with Mad Max, it, it's hard for me to, to look back at it and wish that I had done it differently because I have to give myself a little bit of leeway in it being my first film. Oh, no, totally. I don't even mean it like that. I mean, like, uh, sometimes, you know, certain actors, have, like, directors are given advice, uh, yeah. you know, you, and that advice has really stuck with you, you yeah. know, like, I've gotten advice with my business, and it's something that's always stuck with me. I mean, someone once told me not long ago that you should always make best friends with the DP. That's pr very good advice. You know, they're the ones lighting you and making the decisions on where the camera goes, so... That, 
I was pretty tight with the DPs regardless of knowing that, so I don't know, but that's something I'll always remember. Um, I just did a set visit on Neon Demon a few nights ago. Oh. Uh, which I believe you're a part of. Yeah. Uh, what has it been like for you? Because I got to watch uh, some filming, and it was, uh, I'm a huge fan of... What day were you there? Oh, wait, who was shooting that day? Uh, Elle was filming stuff, yeah. and Keanu came by to talk, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah. a hotel sequence. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, okay. Uh, but what what has your experience been like making the film and collaborating? I mean, it, it's it's such a it's so different to Mad. You know, it couldn't be it couldn't be more different to Mad Max. There's the pace is much slower. It's a very it's a very slow pace in terms of the way that um, Nicholas goes about shooting and it not being an action film. Also, it's much more. It's much more um, mind-bending and mentally intense. And for me, the character that I'm playing is very close to home. So for me, it's been a mixture of, um, you know, somewhat cathartic, but also a little bit daunting, having to go to places in my mind that, you know, are not necessarily the happiest of places, you know? Uh, I'm a big fan of Alex Price, and mm -hmm. you worked with him on Gods of Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the experience like working and collaborating with him, and who do you play? Uh, I play a, a, an albino serpent riding assassin. You know, very the, much the based usual. on reality. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I. That's again. I mean, I seem to. Have, I seem to book such weird roles. Um, that that was that was different again because it was all CGI and it was all it was much more physical. You know, I don't say much in that film. There was a lot of. I did months and months of. Um, weight training and um, weapon training um, so it was mostly about learning how to fight which you know to be fair that's sort of why I got the role because I, I did martial arts for years as a kid so I was sort of already ahead um, of maybe someone who hadn't done anything before but yeah that was that was very physical and it was all CGI so it was like I was saying my lines to a tennis ball <laughs> that had to be very that's uh, uh, re connecting with your uh, childhood imagination. Yeah, exactly, which goes back to me talking about realizing that I should have been doing it my whole life. That's what I spent most of my time doing, climbing trees and speaking to them, but in, you know, imaginary fairies. <laughs> what, before you got into acting and modeling, did you have a real shitty job? Did you have like a worse job or, and what was it? I did so many shitty jobs. I was a basketball referee and I'd, I'd ref like six games in a row and then play one at night. I mean, that's like so boring. Um, and I'd get like six bucks a game, you know, like for hours and hours. Uh, I was, uh, I worked at a hot dog stand at the football. I also used to stick corn at the, at the fun fairs. And I remember one time I was out the back like hammering sticks into cobs of corn for them, you know, um, them to cook. And there was a um, chairlift thing above me and kids were like spitting on me and throwing shit at me. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I've had some, I've had some pretty shit jobs. You know something though, I, I think a lot of people will enjoy hearing that because it just shows that like no matter what you do, there's always, you know what I mean. Yeah, I was also a checkout chick and I worked at a bakery. I mean, here's the thing is like I, I in Australia you have to be 14 and 9 months to legally work. And I'm pretty sure the day I was 14 and 9 months I was out there getting a job. I didn't come from wealth, so... Uh, if, if you wanted to do something fun on the weekend, I had to make the money for it. So I've been working since I was, you know, for more than half my life. Uh, I've been playing a game with some people recently called Save or Kill. Okay. Uh, you can, one of these you can save, it's not, these are not hard okay. questions. <laughs> uh, one of them you can save, one of them is erased from existence forever. What do oh you save? God. Ready? Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Uh, Mario or Zelda? Zelda. Uh, Mad Men or The Wire? The Wire. In Sync or Backstreet Boys? Can I kill both? <laughs> <laughs> so you saved not neither. <laughs> um, yeah. You can. Okay, sick. Uh, Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones? Uh, Breaking Bad. Okay. No, no, that's fine. Um, what? Did I win? No, no, it's just I, I've been compiling this from everybody. Yeah, uh, for for the future, obviously you mentioned you've played these interesting roles. Are you trying specifically to like land a romantic comedy or a comedy or you know a nor you know what I'm saying like a more grounded character? No, never. I have I have I have a lot of interest in doing um, 
ethereal characters in in big wild creative films and then I also have a lot of interest in playing raw uh, emotionally driven um, characters with heart and soul to do rom-coms and the girl next door is just not it I just don't want to spend my time doing something that I'm not overly passionate about and right right now at this moment in my life I don't think you're going to see many of those and who knows I might in 10 years time decide that I think I'm funny and cute <laughs> um, that's good <laughs> Uh, what's coming up for you next? And that's my last question. I don't know. I'm, I've got three and a half more weeks of um, shooting Neon Demon, and then I'm probably going to go to the premiere of Ruben Guthrie that's um, happening in, in Sydney. They got asked to open the Sydney Film Festival, so I might go down for that. And I don't know. i just see what happens. It sounds cool. Let me hit stop and say thank you for your time.